We don't like but a little bit. I think, I think this year I'm going to gamble with the September and just plant them early. With the yeah. rain we've been getting in the forecast, I'm going to go ahead and yeah, probably so. roll the dice. It'll be, be hunting it both seasons. I mean, you may have to shoot early. half a mile. I know. <laughs> I'm going to go put some cameras out then. Today, we're out here and uh, it's not a TV day. This is just a kind of kicking it out in the country and uh, pretty much got a day off. And so we're out here putting out cameras and, and checking some of these feeders and pretty much just kind of a ride along trying to see what all we can see and kind of let you eavesdrop in on our day. And if you like this sort of thing, be sure to subscribe to Bone Collector Man and check it out. We're going to try to bring y'all a lot more cool stuff. So uh, y'all ride along with us, see what all we can get into. Here in this area, I just want to see what was hitting this corn pile. Had Big and Jay in a trough right over that ridge. And so what I like to do is I like to save my Big and Jay, you know, for, for actually killing over it. And then sometimes the corn I can put in these feeders, keep an inventory, keep them in there. Then I can hand pick the stand locations around the area. I do like feeders. I've got a couple of the capsule feeders and most of the feeders only run on corn but I like to keep the deer in the area with the feeders and obviously that's in the state that's legal Georgia you can legally feed deer so I try to keep them a little bit every every morning and night even if it's only five or six seconds if I can feed them all year I do corn's pretty cheap it still gets expensive if you got a multiple feeders but what I like to do if I can keep them chummed in and keep them coming to it obviously you can see right here it's gonna slow down this feed feeder once I get a good food plot established probably out here I'm probably gonna come with some uh, backwoods I've been working with those guys we're developing the bone collector seed and uh, probably do some like forage type oats probably do some radish I'll probably do a little bit of wheat and probably white clover as well as marrow leaf clover very similar and to me they'll be just an unbelievable green field here to keep deer in and then what I'll do is I'll keep the feeders running. If I'm hitting the feed, then a lot of times what I'll do around my bow hunting stands, I'll come in and take, you know, Big and J, whether it's the typical Big and J, um, or, you know, take the uh, deadly dust, which is basically sweet corn, and then I can kind of hand chum them. So kind of a multi-purpose attack. Obviously, I know what you're thinking, that gets expensive. It does. You can eliminate several of those options. And so if I had to eliminate one, for the accountability or the, the financial part of it. Food plots are great, but they're very expensive. It takes a, a big tractor, it takes implements, it takes fertilizer, it takes a lot of different things. So food plot, in my opinion, is kind of a rich man's bait. 
So in the world of ethics, sometimes people don't like bait, but in reality, this was all used to be pines and it's been cleared and I plant it and I put the ultimate bait, which is in forage uh, products and cereal, oats and wheat and clover and different things. I can do a multitude of things. You fertilize it good, but just in a plot like this, it's not uncommon at all to have a couple thousand dollars by the time you fertilize it, you buy the seeds. Maybe not a couple, maybe not a thousand dollars in this, but in a hunting club, you can each spend two or three thousand, four thousand dollars just on your food plots. And so uh, when it gets down to it, I still think the corn and Big and J, where legal, is your most feasible, financially secure way to track deer to your property. Obviously, if you can do all of them, that's great but not all of us can afford that because it gets very expensive. So I've been blessed to where I can at least have some food plots and a few feeders, but uh, you know, if I was down on the budget, I would just go to the Big and Jane Corn. This spot, they're wearing out pretty good. This is the wireless, but I'm, I put the wireless back in the further spot because obviously I, it's not as accessible on the very back side of my property. So I put the wireless in these spots, the spots that I can get to easy every day where I'm kind of taking an inventory around the, the Big and J piles. I go check the cards and I still like that. It's easy to save on the computer and I can upload them from the wireless. So I just put these because that way I don't have to come back here every day. We put two cameras up already we got several more and i'm telling you man this is just as much fun as hunting when you get in that inventory of what lives on your property i would say within a week or two you can really find most all your deer i like to put a camera i don't know i think one camera per 20 30 acres i know that sounds like a lot depending on how much you got but a cool chum pile Two weeks, I think you can pretty much find most of the deer that's on your in your on your property or hunt club. And uh, so, in my case, I can take six or seven cameras, and I can find every deer on this 500 acres that I'm hunting here. This is more of what my boy calls, of all things, he calls this the Water Creek. It's water and it's a creek. He didn't get real creative, but he's correct. Oh, them are younger turkeys. Yeah. Them turkeys raised. I see three or four. Three or four, five poles in there that was born this year. That's a good sign. I didn't think we had a good hatch this year, but that's, that right there was a good sign. I saw at least four or five first year turkeys. That's awesome, man. That's the first young ones I saw. But now we've opened up all this habitat back here, so the deer are not just, I mean, the turkeys are not just on the orchard. That's good. So check this out. This could be the absolute hottest spot on my place come about April or early March when the season comes in in Georgia. This is chufa. And what chufa is, it is a specific nutgrass type of plant that you plant in May or June, depending on if you're north or south. Um, I particularly planted this chufa here. One is it's a good central location for uh, where the turkey like to be on my place, but it's also got a sandy base to it, so it drains real well, and it's a very soft uh, base where these turkeys can scratch. And basically it turns into a nut grass, so there'll be a cluster of nuts. And so this takes about 90 days to mature. So you plant it in May or June. And so typically the first freeze, it's gonna kill it all, but your crop is still in the ground. So at that point, you pray the deer, turkey, or hogs don't find it. And so if that gets into the January or February, you can plow a strip in it, or typically, naturally, the turkeys find it. They start scratching it, and you got you a legal, you know, basically bait out there that the turkeys will absolutely devastate. They would rather have chufa seed than anything out there and it becomes unbelievable. If you got a first time hunter that wants to get a turkey, you want to set up a blind, maybe you got a kid that you want to see get his first turkey, or maybe you've gotten lazy and you're tired of running a gun and you just want to sit and 
put about four or five hours, a turkey's gonna come to this field. So chufa is one of the best things to plant for turkeys to legally hunt them over from a food source. You can't bait turkeys. There's only two or three states that I know of in America that you can legally hunt turkey over bait. This is unbelievable. The negative to it, if you take a food plot like this, this is approximately about three quarter acre. It takes this away from my deer hunting and I have to dedicate this particular food plot to turkeys and the chufa. So if you're looking for something to plant for turkeys, chufa seed. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You just wait till about March. It'll look like little moon craters all out there and the turkeys are out here every day. You can't even run them out. It's insane. Hogs love it too, but that sucks because togs get out there and root up the whole chufa field. Deer eat them too. Once deer figure out they can paw them up, especially after it's been around a while. This is the first time I've ever planted chufa on this particular farm, so these deer are probably be reluctant to dig it up. But once they figure it out, they'll be out here too digging it up and eating it. talk about right here so my dad's in a tractor and I got another tractor running right here plowing up about a three acre field so obviously I can't say how blessed I am to be having some nice pretty food plots and what I'm doing here almost in any part of America is perfectly legal to come in here and farm specifically to grow an attraction to have the deer to come out in for their health benefit and our to hunt over to help us as a hunter so in reality I'm growing bait Ethically, people kind of look at that and they don't ever frown upon it. And I think everybody who hunts green fields enjoy the fact that it's legal. When you watch these TV shows and you see the Lakoskis, you see the Drury's, in this case Bone Collector, myself, Nick, and T-Bone, this is my land and I'm so blessed and I'm not out here even bragging, but right out here in this field, you're talking almost $100,000 worth of equipment. Not to count, there's three acres of habitat that I've reclaimed to specifically help in wildlife to hunt and for conservation to make sure the deer and turkey and anything that comes out here has a nice, good spot to eat. So that brings up the situation of baiting. This is why I think baiting should be legal in all 50 states. Because everybody don't have the same opportunity that I might have or that you might have if you have food plots. Or that the Lakoskis, the Drury's, the Jordans, the name goes on and on, or different people in our counties and our areas that have a chance to farm and put in food plots. Who can go out necessarily and just buy a $20,000, $30,000 tractor? Who necessarily has a five or 10 acre places to hunt that's open? Who has the money to go out and spend a grand on fertilizer, maybe five, $600 on seed? So when it gets down to it, everybody, man, woman, and child can afford a bag of being big and jay, a bag of corn, and you can put it out. And that becomes bait too, but it's affordable bait. It might give a kid an opportunity to see a deer, that might not have a situation to where his family member or dad or uncle or maybe his brother can have a food plot like this. Any kid that comes hunt this redneck blind over here in uh, late fall, I guarantee you there'll be two or three at least does out here. It might not be a big buck, but you're going to see deer. So you're going to be able to see deer. So in my personal opinion, before we start beating our chest and start talking ethics about those who can bait and those states that are legal to bait, think about the financial situation that everybody could be in. And for me, I think everybody should have the opportunity to hunt how they see fit and to make sure that we don't go over the bag limit and we throw out the machoism of deer hunting and give an opportunity. So if I can legally put this out and farm it as bait, I think that anybody out here in the state of Georgia, which luckily the state of Georgia recognizes it and you can legally bait, but across the country I think baiting should be legal because it gives everybody the same equal opportunity. That's just my personal opinion because my job ain't necessarily to shoot deer. My job is to see everybody enjoy what it's like to go out and hunt and potentially see deer. So in this situation, even the guy who maybe has got a little old 10 acre pine flat and don't have an opportunity to put a food plot in, maybe can't afford a brand new tractor. 
he can buy a bag of Big and J and he can buy some corn and he might have his kids see a deer. He might see a deer. It might be a single mom who can take their daughter hunting. So that's why I'm a proponent for baiting countrywide. Let the corn and Big and J flow, baby. Here it is, it's late August, and right now we're just out doing some stuff for our partners. Uh, one of our partners being Bushnell, we're putting out some trail cameras. Obviously, we're still in the big time inventory area of trying to figure out what kind of bucks that we have to hunt. This is on my own personal farm here, here in the Piedmont area of Georgia. So even though I do have a decent inventory, the deer are starting to change around. They're starting to, some of them creep out of velvet. So I'm trying to get some patterns and seeing what's happening. And uh, in my opinion, this part of the hunt is more fun a lot of times than the hunt itself because once it comes time to hunt, you've done all your work and you understand what's going on. So it makes it even sweeter when you do get that arrow in that target book. So uh, hopefully all this pays off. Well, y'all probably recognize this spot. Check it out. Old ladder blind sitting up there about 20 foot. This is where my boy Mason and uh, Ryan Wakening got a chance to video Mason shoot his first ever Pope Young in the state of Georgia, man. He was standing about right here, actually. <laughs> you just smoked you a big old Georgia buck, boy. Yes, baby. Well, son of a gun. We're gonna slip in and get a camera out and slip out real quiet. This is always, this is, the Magic Mountain. I call it Mason's Mountain, but he ain't killed a deer here in a while. We might change it to Magic Mountain. Give us something to look at. It's a good spot. There's been a lot of big deer killed in this field. People ask all the time what kind of feeder that is. <laughs> this feeder right here is a uh, something my dad made. He had some old 50 gallon drums. These are homemade, so that's the kind of feeders these are. And they've worked good, man. I got some Big and J in there now. Some dead in the dust and some different, uh, some corn. And they are wearing this out. You can see a bunch of them coming in right yonder. That's a slick trail. And then this whole field will be in some type of oats. I put some backwood attraction blend out here and plant it up. Fertilize it real good. I like the liquid fertilizer, as you know. Right here, be heaven on earth. Redneck blind perched up on the hill. And it has paid off in years past. We have shot some good bucks. My son Meyer shot a monster here. Mason's shot a good buck here. I shot probably my, one of my best bucks in Georgia here with my rifle with my boy Waylon in the stand. That redneck blind right there, I know, has seen three, if not four, 150 class bucks hit the turf in Georgia. So that's it's not bad odds. So this is called the kill field because it's a veteran of seeing deer hit the ground. See you in October. cameras up and uh, we'll be back at it once again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Papa, as you see here on the floor, Papa's got to put this hair back together. I you can't have too many hair. I will bring Waylon out here. He'd love to help you do that. That's right up his alley. No, he would. Yeah, he would. Yeah. yeah. I've seen Go back on. Me and Waylon are putting new parts on here. Papa got to put it back under here. We I run this thing the other day with a broke bearing and I wore out some parts, so we're trying to get it back going because we're going to get pretty serious with these food plots. I got my little man with me, so yesterday we uh, we uh, actually come out, Ryan came out and we videoed a little bit of putting out some cameras. Typically I like to give them three or four days. I think I even said we're going to give them three to four or five days, but I can't stand it, so we back out here, Ryan's with me again. Cohen's here to shoot some stuff for our TV show on Bone Collector. Papa's here fixing the plow and so I can't stand it. This one back here uh, in my favorite spot to hunt on my farm 
I, 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 I want to go, I want to go get that card. Come on, wait. Let's go get this card. And see what's on there. I had to fix a little bit of the tires on the boat. Really? Can you check my check that power steering? I got Waylon. He's full time mechanic out here. What's it looking like? It ain't gonna work. No, cause the less, cause there's no electricity in it as well. What in the world? Well, how are we gonna fix it? And what about that? Is that the power steering fluid? Do you, well, you think if we can get a little bit of electricity out of that container over into uh, this? Oh, this container won't open. Well, here I got an idea. Why don't you just tighten up these a little bit, and we'll see what we can get out of it. Well, let's go for it. See how it looks. How's that fit look? Good. Good. And, and even make sure one of these steering columns in here, we have to hit to which way. You see how it feels. See if, see if it feels right. Turn it a little bit. We're going to go get this car. This ain't a piece of corn hardly on the ground. I think I got that thing spread in 30 seconds in the morning and 30 seconds at night. That's why I can't stand it. I'm gonna pull that camera. It's only been here one day, so I just wanna see if any of those big bucks come in. You're still working on that thing. I got it on three minutes uh, interval and there's 815 photos on there. So. I don't know if the big one's going to be on there, but there are going to be plenty of deer on there. So Let's go back and check it. All right, get that steering column fixed. Let's go check these photos. This is not a steering problem. It's not a steering problem? What is it? It won't start up first. Here, tweak it and let me see if I can get it to get it started. Just hit your wrench on it. Well, your mama's going to be mad if I put you on TV with all them boogers in your nose. Why don't we go back and check his card? Get on back and I'll get you in the shade and we can fix it down there. You want to? Drive it on back. Let's drive it on back. Going back to the barn. Maybe pop off and help you. I don't know what your problem is. That, de that deer could be one that blows. I haven't had any deer that's blown. It's just hard to know if, 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 is he gonna put five more inches on in a year? Is he gonna put 20, you know? Mm -hmm. By rule, the ones that I've seen, it's really only been about a five inch jump. I just hadn't seen any crazy jumps. But I'm almost certain that's the deer that beat up, beat up uh, the buck fight. This nine, there's this nine is probably my number one deer. I will not that deer there. I want to get yeah. that deer right there. Yeah. I like that nine for her. Yeah. We got quite a few nice ones. I see him there. No, that's up the top. That's oh, I'm that's that big nine. He's a ten. He's he's big. He's, oh, that's a good deer. Yeah. Nice bucks in there. There ain't no doubt. Redesigning this thing. <clears throat> Got a hole right here. His chain goes through, and uh, been jagging this thing a few years. A friend of mine gave it to me, but what happens? It lays right here, and as you drag it, it wears the chain out. So I'm trying to get the chain to the center where it won't be dragging on the dragging on this edge. Hopefully, hopefully my chain will last long. Always rebuilding stuff, you know how it is. Like I said before, there ain't something to do on a farm. It's called you don't want to do nothing. We're doing a little thing for Horny Ammunition. They're having their sales meeting, so we're just having a good time, laughing, cutting up, having a nice, fun time. All right, wait and hold your ears. Stand right there. I'll do a double take. Hey everybody, I'm glad y'all hope y'all having a good time at the sales meeting. Right there. Hey everybody, Michael Waddell here from Georgia. Just wanted to say hello and everything. <laughs> Damn Bobcat trying to slide by out here. <laughs> Neil will love that. Hey everybody, Michael Waddell here from Georgia. 
just wanted to say hello and everything. <laughs> Damn Bobcat trying to slide by out here, you know, right in the middle of his virtual, uh, you know, Zoom sales meeting. And that, that just reminds me, that's why I'm excited to be part of this pro team, you know? When you think about how good that the ammunition is that we have at Hornady, how great the family is at Hornady, which includes Jason Hornady, even him, you just think about how good this ammo is and what we're trying to sell here, folks. We're trying to sell something that'll win wars, that'll fill tags. Even as I stand here, no camo, 100 degree heat, and I'm a big game hunter, I'm a small game hunter. Anytime I put this ammo up in the air or I aim or I don't even aim, something dies. Let me show you an example right this. Sitting here, talking all about the Zoom uh, meeting here via the, uh, you know what I'm talking about, sales meeting through the Zoom video conference. Watch this. So I'm just sitting here looking, thinking about how we're going to sell some ammo. Show you how good this ammo is. Green head. Amount of bullets. I got a bobcat and a green head just sitting here, 100 degrees in Georgia. That's what we're talking about. Let's celebrate the good stuff, and that means we're going to celebrate horny ammunition. Let's sell it. Let's have a good time. I'm going to go fetch up my trophies. Hope you all have a good sales meeting. Well, that right there, that's about two days hanging on the farm. And uh, if you like this stuff, man, be sure to subscribe. We've got a lot of cool things. and. Uh, like the other day, one of my favorites, T-Bone's Hoyt set up, just setting up an RX-4. I got my bow set up coming soon. and Really, we don't even know what all we're going to have out, but just life out in the country and just getting ready for our bone cutter show and just fun things, some tips and tactics. It might be how to rebuild a plow, it might be putting a food plot in, it might be just a good hunting video, but uh, be sure to check out this bone cutter page right here on YouTube, man. Subscribe, and we'll keep posting on new stuff coming out. All right, well, let's fix it. You finish, are you gonna finish helping pop off with the flower on? How does that? All right, look, pop has got it about ready to slide in there. Pick it back up, set it in here. All right, just let's set it in here. Pop off. I got 160 acres in the valley. I got 160 acres of the bay. Oh, one more thing I forgot to tell y'all when you're looking. Bone Collector album is coming soon. Volume 2, man. You gotta check it out. You're gonna love it. Some of the best songs we've had yet. Alright, push down. Whoa! You doing that? He, you helping him, ain't you? He ain't doing yeah, that by we, himself. We gotta snug it up. Is that hard, Waylon? All we're gonna do is snug and then we're gonna get the impact wrench. We gotta slide them back under here and get them in place. 